Where can you actually wear a Libre CGM? Most people think that back of the arm is the only option, but is that really the best one? In this video, I'll be showing you my top three Libre placements for the best accuracy and the fewest failures. And I'll also include some surprising spots that I've seen other people love. I'm Christelle, and I've been living with type 1 diabetes since 1997. I've been wearing CGMs for over a decade, and that includes every version of the Libre sensor. And here's the twist. My least favorite spot is actually the one it's FDA approved for, which is the back of the arm. Let me start by showing you where I get the best results. And despite the label, you might also find that some of these places work better for you. My favorite placement is right here on my lower back. Honestly, I didn't expect it to work this well. Um, it kind of surprised me and here's why. I've worn other CGMs in this placement before, but it's been a while. And this experiment actually reminded me of just how great of a placement it is. What I really like is that it's out of the way. I mean, how often do you bump your lower back on something, right? And also, I usually don't inject insulin in just that area, so it's not taking away an injection site. It also stuck extremely well to my skin despite me exposing it to a lot of warm weather and dips in the ocean. If you're not quite flexible enough to twist around and look at your lower back, you can use a mirror and it's fairly easy to insert a Libre sensor since you can do it with one hand and it does not require an overlay tape. I'd say the only thing you have to think about is that if you wear jeans and a belt, you don't want to place it so that it will sit directly underneath the belt. When I've worn my Freestyle Libre on my lower back, I've seen extremely good accuracy, it's out of the way, it sticks really well to my skin, and I haven't had a single compression low. So compression low is a fake or false low blood sugar reading. So it happens when you put pressure on the sensor, for example, when you're sleeping, and that will then result in a false low alert. And even when I sleep on my back, I don't get those compression loads. It could be because I have a bit of a sway in my back, so it might not be pressing directly into the mattress, but yeah, that has not been an issue for me. A compression load can be spotted by looking at your CGM graph rather than just at the number. So let's say that your blood sugar is bobbing along at 100, and then all of a sudden it's 50, so from 100 to 50. Then it might be a compression load. There's only one way to know, and that's by doing a finger stick to check. So. Lower back is my favorite placement. As mentioned, back of the arm is actually my least favorite. Let me tell you why. And it is a little weird. This used to be my favorite placement for CGMs just a few years back, but now it seems like I'm getting a lot of compression lows and it's also just easier to bump it on things ripping off the sensor. But I think the main issue is that my skin gets pretty beaten up by these sensors. And I find that I need to give it a little rest sometimes. When it comes to accuracy, the back of the arm is fairly consistent for me. It tends to run a little higher than my finger sticks, but consistently higher. It's also the only place where I had a sensor fall off. Actually, it didn't just fall off, it got ripped off because I forgot I was wearing it when I was changing my clothes. Also, I don't always want to advertise my diabetes, which is pretty much what you do when you wear it on the back of your arm. For the most part, I don't care but sometimes I do. And I live in a really warm place, so it's not like I can just, let's say, hide it under a big sweater. Another great off-label placement that I've been testing is the upper thigh. In my experience, when I wear it on my upper thigh, I have very good accuracy. It's not in the way. It can be discreet if I choose it to be. And I don't really have any compression lows. I find the accuracy with the Libre sensors to vary quite a bit from sensor to sensor. But for me, when wearing on my thigh, it was incredibly accurate right from when I inserted it. I think the trick to not getting compression lows with this placement is to not place it directly on the side of your thigh, but a little bit towards the front, just like I did. That way you're less likely to lie in it when you sleep. Initially, I did have to be a little bit more careful when I was getting dressed not to rip at the sensor when it was on my thigh, but overall, no problem. I would say the main risk is if you toss and turn while you sleep, you might end up twisting it off in your sleep. So I have not had this issue with Libre, but I've had it with another CGM, the Dexcom T7. And with that one, I managed to sort of twist it out even off the overlay tape in my sleep. I don't know, I was sleeping very violently. Uh, that was painful. But my solution to this has been to apply a skin grip overlay tape without a cutout. And as I said, I've had no problems with the Freestyle Libre. Those were my two favorite placements and probably the ones I'll be using the most frequently going forward. But another placement I also really like is on my abdomen. I actually expected this to be my favorite placement and it's really good, but 
for me, it's just, it's good. I think the biggest pro is for those of you who are looking for discreet placement. You can hide it underneath a t-shirt or a sweater, whatever. Um, also, I think this is a place where it's the easiest to insert the sensor because you can see what's going on while inserting it. As for the thigh and lower back placement, I had fairly good accurate readings when I wore my Libre on my abdomen. However, same thing, it ran a little bit lower than my finger sticks. To be fair, this seems to have been just an overall theme for me lately. And it's a little weird because if you saw my Libre 3 Plus review here on the channel, all of those sensors were running a little bit on the higher side compared to finger sticks. So I don't know if there's just been a general change or if it's just me. I do want to point out though, that it wasn't enough for it to be considered inaccurate. It just was running a little lower than my finger sticks. And you can expect your CGM to not be the same as your finger stick at all times. Actually a plus minus 20% difference is still within what's considered accurate. It's not all positive though. There's a risk that if you sleep on your stomach, you might experience more compression lows. And if you inject insulin in your abdomen area, well, the sensor does take up a bit of real estate where you cannot inject insulin, as you should not inject insulin within three inches of your sensor. Those were my three favorite places to wear a Libre CGM that I've tested, the lower back, the thigh, and the abdomen. But those are not the only places you can place a Libre CGM. I guess, technically you can place it anywhere below the neckline, that is not a recommendation, just saying. I've seen a few other placements that other people love, and I think they're really fascinating, really promising, but to be completely honest, I've been a bit too much of a wuss to actually try them on myself. But let me show you fascinating Libre placements, and if you tried any of these, or if you tried others for that matter, and you really like them or don't like them, leave me a comment down below this video. And while you're at it, why not also subscribe to my channel and hit that bell? That way you'll be informed whenever I post new content, you'll never miss a thing. I watched a lot of YouTube videos of where others place their Libre, and the consensus seems to be that wearing it on the chest is a solid placement. The argument is that it's not in the way, the accuracy is great, and it does not get snacked on anything. But then I also saw that Dr. Hannah Hamlin mentioned in her video that she doesn't love the upper chest since most don't have a lot of fat there, and the sensor should sit in fat, not muscle. That's a really interesting argument. I will say that I don't have a lot of fat on my lower back or on my thighs, but I do have enough tissue, I'd say like that, that the sensor does not sit directly in my muscle. So that seems to work for me. And my guess is that as long as it doesn't sit directly into muscle, you'll be fine. But I don't think, I still don't think I'll be trying the chest any day soon. Would you? Another one of the lead replacements that earns high praise online and really looks promising, but again, I've never built up the nerve to try it, is the inside of the arm. Again, not a place that I have a lot of fat, but I don't know, maybe you don't need it. And then there's a final placement, again, that I haven't built up the nerve to try, which is the forearm here, I guess. And I've seen other people wear their CGMs here and really like it. For example, here you got my friend Connie. It's a different sensor, but definitely in her forearm. But some of the feedback on this placement from others here on YouTube have been that some say it can really hurt. And also you might get delayed readings probably due to lower blood flow in this area. But to summarize, my three favorite placements are lower back, upper thigh, and my abdomen. And if I was a little braver, I'd probably also try out the chest placement. I think that for me, the only real reason I would have to wear a leaper on the back of my arm would be, well, if I really want to show it off or if I really want to stick to the label because the Libre sensor is only approved for wear on the back of the arm. So if you do wear it anywhere else, it's considered off-label wear. That also means that if you choose to wear it off-label, I can't guarantee that Abbott, the manufacturer, will take any sort of responsibility if the sensor falls off or if it malfunctions. However, if you want to wear it somewhere else, just have a discussion with your doctor. They can also recommend alternative placements and they can actually prescribe off-label use. And it's always recommended to discuss these things with your medical team before making any changes to your care or to your device placement. As mentioned, I've tested a lot of Freestyle Libres over the last year. And I actually did a full review of the Freestyle Libre 3 Plus that you can find right here. If you like this video, if you'd like to see more from me, remember to subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications. That's that little bell 
That way you'll be informed whenever I post new content, you'll never miss a thing. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.